Hi everyone, I'm Ibrahim. I'm one of the internal medicine trainee in the NHS. Welcome you back again to our course, Post-Graduation Pathway in the UK, an in-depth guide for INGs. Uh, you have watched uh, the previous uh, lesson by Dr. Ibriz on run-through specialties and uncoupled specialties. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to tackle some important terms that are thrown around uh, and to give you an understanding of what those means and where to find those. Today's topic is competencies and person specifications. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about some uh, objectives. We are going to talk about what does it mean by competencies? How can I prove that you achieve the required competencies? And what does it mean by a person specification? You hear this word thrown around a lot. And what are the key information to look for a person specification? And how can you make targets to achieve those person specifications? So competency. Competency is a word which means, like plainly, the ability to do something successfully. So it can be a list of uh, procedures. It can be a list of consultations. It can be a list of clinical work uh, that you are able to do something successfully. Now, the next question is, what competencies do you need? So as a doctor to work in the UK, there could be like, you know, several steps. So the first step is foundation competencies, which can be proven by getting a crest from signed or joining the foundation training. There are core competencies, which can be gained by joining a core training program or getting an alternative or equivalent certificate signed or there are some specialty specific competencies in which the core training is not separate, like say for pediatrics, obstetrics and gynae. To join ST3 level or ST4 level directly, you have to have the ST2 level or ST3 level competencies or equivalent certificate signed. Now, how can you prove those competencies? Like what, what are the ways I can say that I'm able to do this? So there could be two types of assessments that can be done. One is summative and is formative. Summative assessments are passing the relevant exams. Like as a, a before a doctor joins into an ST3 of any medical uh, specialty, they have to pass MRCP. And so it, uh, you have to pass the exam to prove that you have that competencies. There are some relevant courses that you have to do. Uh, and DOPS, DOPS stands for Directly Observed Procedural Skill. Uh, and those can be summative after you've done the formative assessment. So you can see the formative assessments, you've done SLEs, which is called Supervised Learning Events. And we have used a lot of um, acronyms here, ACADS, Acute Care Assessment Tool, CBD stands for Case-Based Assessment, Mini Clinical Evaluation Exercise, WPBA stands for Workplace-Based Assessment, and the supervisor reports like um, MCR is Multi-Consultant Report, uh, ESR is Educational Supervisor Report and etc. All these reports are basically collected in your portfolio and that's how you can show that you have achieved those competencies. So you have to collect these evidences in your portfolio, getting signed by different consultants and senior doctors that you work with and that's how you can say that you have achieved those competencies. Now let's move on towards finding how can you see what competencies you have to achieve. So as I was talking about different competencies like foundation competencies or core competencies or specific specialties, specific level competencies, uh, we're just going to just use our friend Google here to find out different competencies here and, and, and go through it. So the initial bit is foundation competencies. It is required uh, by a doctor to enter into any of the initial bit of uh, say, core training or run through training like say if you want to enter into st1 of any specialty or ct1 of any specialty you have to have the competencies equivalent of a foundation trainee doctor and for an img uh, this can be easily achieved by an alternative certificate which is called crest those of you who haven't uh, uh, done any of the courses on our road to uk if you just search google road to uk crest and that's how it shows up in our website. This this course we have made with a view to making a comprehensive guide for international medical graduates how the crest form can be signed. I think the amount of topics we have discussed about crest form in that course it is beyond the scope of this specific course right now to, to rediscuss it again. So if you want to know about crest form, uh, that means how to achieve these foundation competencies 
please go through our course to say in the lessons we have discussed about all the things like supervised learning events, uh, portfolio and all the other things. If you go through some of those videos, you'll have an idea about how to achieve the foundation competencies. So I'll gear this video more uh, towards uh, core competencies. So core competencies will be uh, coming to play when uh, you have already either uh, have years of experience already and you have completed your membership exams and all the other things and you do not want to go through the whole three years or two years of core training rather you want to focus yourself uh, achieving those competencies so that you can apply for a higher specialty level like say st3 or st4 level so the two most common core uh, uh, training that we are going to discuss today is one internal medicine training and the second one being core surgical training. So what happens in internal medicine training? Currently I am in internal medicine training so I have a portfolio to maintain and I have a list of competencies that I have to achieve. So let's uh, let's google in So if you Google internal medicine training competencies, this curriculum for internal medicine stage one training comes up, which I had opened in a separate PDF viewer. So there we go. So here in the new curriculum, they have divided uh, the whole uh, competencies into two parts. One is general clinical capabilities and specific clinical capabilities, I guess. CIP stands for capabilities in practice. So yeah. So general SIPs and spe specialty specific SIPs. So as you can see, here's the list of things. It's same in my portfolio as well. So there's like general SIPs. So they have points, the six points, and there's this eight points. And on all those points, I can achieve proof of what I have done to uh, prove that, that I am able to successfully function with NHS organizational management system. So what are used to prove these competencies, we'll discuss in a minute. Um, uh, or different supervised learning events and, and different summative and formative assessment can be done while you are at job to prove this uh, learning outcomes or to prove these competencies like say to managing an acute specialty data take so maybe I, I did uh, 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 take like five or six patients and, and went to a consultant and discussed all those cases uh, and then uh, I sent him a form in my portfolio so he signed it back so in my portfolio we have a signed form which proves that i am able to manage an accurate specialty rate take and that goes into my portfolio which shows that i've achieved this outcome so how many of one thing you need is all uh, uh described in the curriculum so that that's a whole bit of another discussion so let's stick to our point is the competencies are this so if you are completed uh, MRCP and wants to come here and say, I want to join uh, a specific spe higher specialty trainee, it's a cardiology trainee or gastroenterology training, and you want to uh, get your core uh, alternative core certificate for internal medicine done, then you have to focus on doing these things in a non-training job. Like uh, you have to know what the internal medicine trainee does and that's what you have to do and collect the evidences in your portfolio and go to a supervisor and get a certificate done. Let's let's just take help from Google again and, and find out what the alternative certificate looks like. As you can see here, the alternative certificate of core competence is available here in the document library. Alternative certificate of core competence. The certificate is already there. So this is the certificate that you have to fill in or get it signed uh, by one of the consultants. It, it's all described here when using the certificate. Please note who can sign the certificate and everything. So who who is this for? This certificate is for the people who is coming and not want to do an internal medicine training curriculum, like say. I went through a GMC approved internal medicine training curriculum but if you already have years and years of experience and you do not want to go through this uh, entire curriculum rather you want to gain these competencies and, and apply for a higher training then this is the form that you have to get it signed 
and supply the, uh, uh, this form uh, during your application for ST3 training. So if you go through this form and, and find out what you need to do and arrange your portfolio according to that, uh, and, and that's how you can achieve towards that. See, it gives you a knowledge and it, all these things has to be provable by some verifiable evidence. And all those evidence have to be in your portfolio. So this is the form. This is very much similar to the crest form. I mean, in, in the in the shape and, and form of the of the whole form, uh, and and that is how you should you should read through it and understand this form and work your way towards getting this form signed. We can find the similar uh, thing for our surgical counterpart. Alternative certificate, of course. This is the certificate equivalence of core surgical training. Here you can exactly say who can complete this form and um, what you need to do to get this form signed. It has good clinical care communication. So all these points uh, are there and you have to do something to demonstrate that you can do this to the consultant and the consultant will be happy to sign this off. So to do all of this, you do need to have your consultant on board and the consultant should know that what you're achieving for. So a clear idea about what competencies you need to achieve is, is needed if you are trying to do this all by yourself without going through um, a professional like GMC approved training. And I was talking about specialty specific competencies as well, like say for example, pediatrics. So pediatrics level one competencies, certificate of completion of level one pediatric competencies. So it has a certificate. All of the certificate is there. See, it all follows the same kind of uh, form. So someone has to see it also has what domain you need to fulfill. So with this list of capabilities and learning outcome, you know what kind of uh, proof that you have to provide to the consultant um, and, and, and what kind of evidence that you have to provide towards the consultant. And you, you, basically this is the syllabus that you have to work towards uh, in your non-training. So these are the different types of competencies that, uh, and this is the way you, you can find uh, the competencies of different specialty levels. Like if you want to join uh, gynecology at ST4 level, that means you have to uh, provide a certificate signed by a consultant, uh, supplied verifiable evidence that you are eligible to work as an ST3 doctor already. Otherwise, you cannot apply for ST4 level. So th that, that's all about how to find the competencies on the internet. Now let's find what person specification, um, uh, how can I find the per person specification of your specific specialty and at the same time what to understand from the person specification all the other things. So if you google person specification specialty training then it takes you to a, this website. This is the place to find this person specification from any specialty that you want and it always gets updated um, and uh, you just need to view and, and we will go through one of the specialties. So we will choose say for, uh, we will start with something uh, core surgical training. Where is that? Core surgical training city one. So this person specification will tell us what are the criteria to get into core surgical training. So let's say the first is obviously the entry criteria and then comes the selection criteria and uh, that is it. So entry criteria, what are the entry criteria? So as you can see, you have to have MBPS degree, that's a given. And there comes the eligibility, you have to be, have an equivalent of say a certificate of readiness to enter specialty training. So to get into CT1 of core surgical training, you have to have a crest form signed or you have to go through a foundation program. Like if you do a standalone program, then you can get this FPCC certificate. Or if you do a non-training job, then you have to target towards getting a crest form signed. And all those these are normally fitness to practice, language and career progression. So the key important points is obviously the eligibility, whether you're eligible for this uh, entering into this training 
and then comes the career progression there are some other criteria that you can see the big big criteria of course surgical training 18 months or less experience in surgery by the time of intended start date so you cannot have like like five years or three years of working in surgery it can be outside as you can see there's some appendix marked so it all says down there that the, the surgical experience can be of any related surgical specialty in anywhere after you got full registration uh, as a doctor like not necessarily by GMC but maybe in your home country you registered as a doctor and worked in surgical field for five years now you want to come and uh, do surgery here so you cannot join core surgical training and that is why you have to work towards getting this alternative certificate of core surgical training so that you can apply for ST3 of your choice of specialty that we have discussed a few minutes ago. So this is the information in career progression that you can find and now you can apply for this training if you fulfill all this entry criteria. Now if you get what you need to have to get selected as you can see it's divided into essential criteria and desirable criteria. So the essential criteria are this listed on this column and the desirables are here. Reading through all of this, basically you can find out what you need to have in your portfolio or what you need to have done before you make your training application. Like say it's research and audit skills, they want to have uh, a, a, an audit done or at least know about some personal skills like communication and organizational planning. How you can prove all of this? You can do many e-learning modules or, or, or maybe a one day courses of management and leadership skills which will give you the evidence for that you know about the management and leadership and if you do some teaching uh, if you can provide some evidence for feedback for teaching then you can fill the desirable criteria and these are the only the person specifications for specifically for core surgical training there is a, there is a point system as well uh, to to uh, to gauge like what uh, is more important than let me just see if we can be much better yeah self-assessment and portfolio guidance for candidates so as you can see in core surgical training for your portfolio what to do and how can you increase your points say if you want to join core surgical training then if you already have a B, B, bachelor's degree in something else then you can claim four points um, if you do some CPD courses, which are four courses relevant to surgery, then you get four points and maximum one mark per course relevant to surgery if you do all these courses. So if you come to the UK and want to join, say, um, uh, um, a, a higher specialty training, that means these are the things the doctors do even before getting into the core surgical training. So, you know, if, if I mean, yeah, not necessarily everybody does it, but those who are higher candidate, they possibly have done it already. So that's that should be your target as well. So if if the doctors in this country have already done it before joining into core surgical training, but I want to join into a higher surgical training, that means at least I have to achieve these first and then work my way towards what the core surgical training does and, and, and work towards that. Yeah, as you can see, some additional achievements and all the things. And if you target towards getting into core surgical training, because which is possible for international medical graduates now, so this pointer uh, table will give you a proper guidance about what you can uh, aim to do in your first, uh, uh, say, non-training job or any of the FY2 level job that you're doing right now, at least prepare your portfolio this way so that you can uh, present your uh, portfolio in your core surgical training application. See, if you have completed MRCS Part A, that uh, proves a commitment to the specialty. The same thing goes for medicine as well. So if you complete MRCP Part 1 or, or Part 2 region or something of that sort, it proves your commitment. Uh, it doesn't give you a specific score uh, in medicine, but here you can see um, uh, it's not scored in the portfolio section, but rather it will be assessed during the interview and the application process. So let's go back to the personal specification. Uh, we will do another one which is at higher level. We'll choose something medicine. Let's say you want to join medical oncology, ST3 level. Say, oh, I have worked in oncology or I am an oncology consultant or I am an oncology, done something in oncology back in my home country, but I want to join medical oncology training. So what you need to have and what criteria you need to fulfill to join this medical oncology training. Let's have a look. So as you can see, same thing goes for entry criteria and 
selection criteria. So for entry criteria, as you can see, you have to have MBBS definitely, you have to have part one uh, at the time of application and full diploma MRCP UK by the published deadline. So they will have a deadline of, uh, so to apply for this, you don't have to have a full diploma, but uh, they will have a deadline published when they, they put out the dates for uh, uh, selection and all the other things. So by then you have to get the MRCP completed. Um, eligibility, as you can see, you have to have evidence of achievement of core medical competencies at the time of application. See, if you do not go through the curriculum, then you have to have this alternative certificate of core competence, as we discussed in our a uh, few minutes ago, alternative certificate of core competence. So if you have not gone through the internal medicine training in this country, that means you have, at least have to produce this certificate signed by a consultant. Then it goes to career progression. As you can see, have at least 12, four, uh, two years of m m experience in medical specialties of which at least 12 months must be in acute care and medical inpatient. So you have to have at least uh, uh, two years of experience. I mean, if you take this route to join a medical oncology at ST3 level, that means you definitely must have. So, and the selection criteria, yes, from the selection criteria, you can achieve what you need to do. Uh, see, you can do some alert course, some impact certification, which will give you higher up in the selection criteria. Um, and if you have an already intercalated BSc degree or some MSc or PhD or MD done, all these have scoring system as well, as we saw for the uh, the core surgical training, I think we can find that googling ST3 recruitment scoring application scoring for ST3 recruitment. So this page has completed like in undergraduate degrees if you have uh, a bachelor's degree then you can score higher. So this is where your MD degree, if you have achieved, comes into play. So if you have MD already, that means you score six points in this. So if nobody, if your other other contestants or other applicants does not have done any MD, so they will not be able to score this point. So this points helps you to get shortlisted and gets higher up in the interview score before you even do the interview. So if you have already done an MD or some MSc of that sort, uh, uh, that will give you points. So your MD can help in your uh, application for training. So same thing with prize and award, if you have got any scholarship or bursary, MRCP, if you have passed part to return and present a standard, uh, yeah. So presentations, if you have done a presentation, then you can uh, claim points, publications. So as you can see, all of this possibly are uh, mentioned here. So if it is already mentioned here and you know what, what is the weight of what things and then you can do all those things and, and, and uh, prepare your portfolio to apply for this training. So, so the key information to find out from a person specification of this page is basically one, what are the entry criteria? What are the qualifications I need to achieve? What are the eligibility that I have to have? So qualifications, eligibility, and then comes career progression. If, is there any specific rule that how many years I have to work and how many years I can't work and all the other things. I want to point towards another thing. If we go to general surgery, see there is a desirable criteria for selection less than 48 months. I think this year a lot of doctors uh, uh, got denied of general surgery ST3 because they had more than uh, four years of experience uh, and let's say they want a desirable less than 48 months but I think that got solved somehow but as you can see all these uh, things can be found from this one piece of document which is readily available by Google search and you don't have to ask anybody anything if you can just understand uh, what all of this mean and uh, uh, what uh, you need to do in order to be selected in a specialty training application.